Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Autodesk's Digital Builder Podcast, a show that inspires construction professionals to innovate and use technology to improve how they build our world. I'm Eric Thomas, and I've been working in construction for nearly a decade. And now I have the privilege to sit down with industry trailblazers to hear how they're solving construction's biggest challenges and redefining the future of the built environment. Welcome to another episode of Autodesk's Digital Builder Podcast. I am your host, Eric Thomas. I am sitting down with Jessica Pollock, the Senior Manager of eLearning and Digital Services here at Autodesk. We are once again in the Autodesk Gallery here in San Francisco. It is a beautiful space. It is not raining today. It is a good day. How are you doing, Jess? So good. Very glad it's not raining. Yeah, we had a, a bit of a roller coaster the last couple of weeks, and I'm glad that that all happened before I flew in. But, you know, things are kind of turning in the corner and uh, I'm feeling good. So I'm happy to be back in the office. And to, to kind of start off our conversation today, we've talked a great deal about training and of course your title e-learning. I think we kind of clued in everybody as to what we're going to be talking about today. But can you tell me a little bit more about how the construction industry has historically approached training and hiring and developing their teams, especially when processes and technology has changed? Definitely. So I used to work in construction and normally our trainings consisted of everyone coming from their different job sites, coming together to the main office, doing in-person trainings, and then going off to our different job sites and helping out others on those sites. But uh, it's really changing now with this digital world. But in the past, mostly on site. I remember those days too. And it was, it was always interesting for me because my role was more in marketing, of course. And so I was doing proposal management, you know, REAs, especially when I was doing federal contracting. But I still had to sit in those eight-hour trainings on site. And so especially for me, 85% of what we were covering oftentimes was absolutely irrelevant to my job on the daily basis. And I'm seeing a lot more open conversations about changing our approach to how we train. And I, I don't think the day-to-day -day on site goes away completely, but I'm excited to hear a bit more about what you're doing and what you're seeing in the market. And I think the, the uncertainty in the last few years, especially as we've trended towards less people on site, has been a bit of a catalyst in, in the conversation that we're having right now. So can you tell me a bit about how that's impacted everything that's happening today with upskilling and what that change really looks like? Yeah. So just a little background. Um, in addition to working in construction previously, I was leading the on-site training team. And when the pandemic hit, everyone was grounded from traveling. And so our careers totally shifted and we needed to be really creative with learning. And so that started out with us doing the one-on-one -on -one remote trainings, but there was really this need for more digital, on-demand, self-paced learning. And we finally had that opportunity at Autodesk to create this program. And being able to like guide people digitally through e-learning, that's really so important with that self-paced and it's been a big perception change with construction. I mean, I talk about this often in the sense that we're still building. We're out, we're out on site. People have to do things and be in person and, you know, carry rebar around or whatever that might be in a particular day. But we've been forced a little bit to reevaluate how we deploy people to project sites, how much we need to travel. And the training piece just can't, kind of came along with that. And people are understanding now there's there's value and flexibility. So with that in mind, what have been some of the biggest benefits for organizations that have really adopted some aspects of remote or online training for their different organizations? Yeah, great question. Um, it's really more accessible to people. You know, everyone is, well, a lot of people are still working from home. Yes, we are back on job sites, but it is such a huge benefit to people with different learning styles as well, because some people need closed captions. We can also reach more people with different languages through e-learning. And being able to just get that refresher really quick, rewinding a video to go back to that one thing you needed to learn. So again, just 
allowing people to learn when they want to learn and learn how they want to learn. And even I enjoy closed captions when I'm watching a movie or something. <laughs> I just learn better. I retain the information better. So it's way more accessible. It's a good way to learn new languages, too. I've, I've watched movies in Spanish or English with Spanish subtitles. And it's interesting to kind of compare and contrast, especially since I have some limited Spanish skills at this point. But you make so many good points. The, the equitable access to learning and meeting people in different ways as far as how they retain and gather information. Some people on jobs might be the more outspoken, I learn it in the moment, I'm going to ask you my questions right now. Other people need to digest things a little bit more. And so they think about it. And the ability to return to that and, and start access, ac accessing the exact portion that they want instead of, well, the eight-hour training's done and the trainer's gone now. What do I do? It's it's a big mindset sh shift, and I think it's it's just going to pay dividends for our contractors, especially as we continue deploying new technology. It's not just software training; it's hardware training, it's process training, it's you know all the required ones that the federal government says you have to do. You can you can bring together in in a way that's a bit more accessible. Yeah, and it's also just professional growth. I mean, you're talking about hardware learning and software learning, all of this. But people also just need general professional growth. So that comes with e-learning as well. Yeah, absolutely. You can package things up in a really interesting way. And not everybody has to either leave their job site or fly into a new location yeah. to go and have that conversation. And I, it's, it's really encouraging to see. And I think it's the baseline of or a launching pad for some bigger, you know, diversity conversations as far as, okay, we've gotten this implemented now we get to showcase why this has impact and hopefully people can use it as a launching pad to have bigger and more impactful conversations from there. Absolutely. So when do you feel companies should really consider this in-person training versus, versus offering a digital remote option? I think we, we just qualified in-person isn't going away, but, but how do you balance that? What, is, what does that look like out on site? Yeah, it really is a balance. I mean, if you're having some new hires start at your company and you just need them to quickly get onboarded, I mean, I'm currently doing this with team members on my team and e-learning is the way to go. Just quickly getting them started, sending them a link here. This will be helpful for you to start. Um, but that definitely doesn't replace the on-site training if you want that deeper implementation specific to your company's workflows. Yes, do that on-site training and get that personalized touch from our implementation specialists. But with e-learning, it's just quick and easy and accessible. Yeah, and the uh, the changing, I guess, perception and how people consume content today, having that flexibility feels like a, a big win, especially as we bring in new talent from younger generations or industries or areas that might not have, you know, service construction before and worked in this industry. Yeah. We're, you know, filling all the, uh, checking all the boxes and trying to, you know, make a, everything as accessible as possible. And with that said, what formats are really bringing the most success in these conversations? Like, what, what is the, the training platform? What are the options? What does this look like? Yeah, again, it's kind of a balance, just like we were saying, it's a balance between online learning and on-site training. With e-learning specifically, it's a balance within that where you do just want those quick videos that people can watch. But you also need to balance that with some interactive activities, some knowledge checks, some tutorials, and just getting people more engaged in that content. And yeah, there are so many options out there, so many tools within e-learning. Yeah, I don't think that our training all has to be the, the droll, I am exhausted in a corner for 18 hours just staring at somebody in front of the room now. Like you said, that still has its place, but you get to, you get to try new things too. And there was a, a, a conversation I had with a customer a while back where they talked about how their training was very iterative in the sense of they deployed things, they had their baseline, but then they also queried the people taking that training and asked like, where, where do we have missteps? What didn't make sense? What didn't work? And those weren't gotcha questions. That was very much help us understand how we can make this better for you next time and for all the other people. And that's, I think, a little harder to do sometimes with in-person training, especially if it's a, 
a massive eight hour or 10 hour experience versus tell me what you think about this 15 minute video you watched. Should it have been two eight minute videos? Uh, was something hard to follow? Could you not find it? There's, there's a lot of possibilities there. Yeah, that's the other point you made where it's like, you have these younger generations that really need that immediate gratification. And so when you have these short, easily consumable, easily consumable videos, uh, that's when it really captures people's attention. Those hour long webinars are not always the best. No, that, that never feels, uh, feels good. <laughs> it, it, it almost feel, ends up feeling too scripted. And I, webinar in particular, I almost feel like a swear word right now, depending on the, the context it's used. You go, oh, we're going to watch a webinar. And you go, mm. oh, are, are we? <laughs> so totally. uh, yeah, having that flexibility is great. But I also know, and I think your, your title and everything we've talked about kind of alludes to this, but you're working on something called the Autodesk Construction Cloud Learning Center, which is a bit of a mouthful. But can you tell me more about that? I can tell you a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> that is my whole world right now. Um, so obviously when the pandemic hit, we needed an online learning platform. And I created the team to create the Autodesk Construction Cloud Learning Center back in November of 2020. And in the past couple of years, we've created hundreds of videos to get people started on our products. And it's really, like I said, the on-demand self-paced learning that people have been looking for. Yeah. And all of our learning paths are currently by product. We have a lot of exciting things coming this year, but it just allows people to jump right in. You get a product, you can go right to the learning center and learn it from start to finish. Yeah, that's fantastic. And the, that self-service nature, too. If somebody's just curious, they want to learn more, they go, this is really neat. There's there's opportunities to upskill yourself as far as your own career goes. And you probably get to, if you're you know a champion for Autodesk Construction Cloud or any of the adjacent technologies, you're going to be more informed as you go in and have those conversations about what's possible. I, I know very, very first handedly, if you hand me a two hour video and say this, you know, mixing board that's sitting in front of me and say, here you go, this is how to use it. I'm going to be frustrated immediately because there's only certain nuances that I care about in the moment. And it's hard to find that in that mm. massive video. But if you give me a two minute video of this is how you just really quickly plug everything in and turn it on and push record, that's a very different thing. And I'm empowered to go start immediately versus, you know, running through the doldrums of this massive video that I, I can't find what I want. Exactly. And we try to make our videos one to three minutes and you can go through those lessons and you can jump around if you need to. But if you do complete an entire course, you can also get certificates of completion that you can put on LinkedIn. So there are a lot of benefits to going through these full courses. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like there's a ton of great content there. I know everybody on our team is excited for the work that you've been doing. But I've got two final questions. One of them is the recurring question I ask everybody. And it's one of my favorites because the the gamut of the, the answer is, is all over the place in a really fun way. So what is one tool that you will always bring to every project that you work on? So I went more direct with this in my mind where I would probably say iPad um, just because that is a new tool in people's toolboxes on site. And there are a lot of tools within those iPads. But if I were to go a little more broad with that answer, I'd probably say empathy. I like it. I mean, the, the iPad part of it, it's it's new, but the the power of that technology is huge. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, it's it's why you and I are sitting here right now. Back when Plan Grid became a thing and somebody finally decided we can digitize our plans. And, you know, Tracy and the, the co-founders of that organization put all that together. But I also love the empathy thing. Thing is the wrong phrase. <laughs> I, I really like the, the empathy as a tool because it it's it's a conversation point that I think more people are having in construction now. And I, I'm sure you've been in them as well. Those rooms where two grown men are standing across from each other, yelling at each other over a project schedule or something. And those are uncomfortable moments. Even if you're outside the conference room, you can just hear it. And as we change the perception and the tone within our industry, I think leading with empathy is, is one of those tools that is going to get us to a point where more people are going to be interested in working with this. And I think the teams are going to collaborate better and the outcome for the clients is going to be better, too. Exactly. And coming out of the past few years, I think it's just so important to just ask people, 
how are you doing? Agreed. How in, can I help? In a meaningful way, too. In, in the United States, and I, I've, I've had the privilege of traveling a decent amount. And in the U.S., we can use that how are you doing as a very passive, flippant, just introductory question. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And then you carry on. Uh, we can go deeper. And I think there's, there's value in that. So yeah. I, I like your answer. That's, that's a good one. Well, thank you for joining me here today. And again, just ha hanging out in this absolutely beautiful space here in the Autodesk Gallery. For everybody listening, thanks for taking the time to join us on this episode of Autodesk Digital Builder Podcast. If you have any questions for me or want to suggest a guest for a future episode, just find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter at builder underscore digital. Of course, as I keep saying, we're in the Autodesk Gallery. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple or wherever you get podcasts, you have to head over to uh, YouTube and take a look at uh, you know what we're doing in the realm of video. Um, we're <laughs> we've got a great video team now. I am surrounded by cameras right now, as Jessica can attest to. But <laughs> outside of that, also if you could take a moment to rate our show, give us five stars and Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, I'd sincerely appreciate it. It does do a lot for us on the back end. And on that final note, goodbye.